Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. It's Monday, so I have your weekly dose of ghost stories for you. Listen, my <laughs> my background is slowly deteriorating. I dropped, I didn't drop, I basically, for some reason, I put like my candlestick thing behind my desk chair, and then I wheeled out of it and it came crashing down and all my fake candles broke, like snapped in half. So they're stuck in the candle holes. So now I just have my normal background. <laughs> but I'm wait I've ordered some more, so I'm waiting for them to come. Something's happening with my hair here. But I've ordered more, I'm waiting for them to come. My new curtains will be up hopefully next time, next week. Um so um I just like having it themed in the background. I feel so bland sitting here like this while I'm telling ghost stories. But oh well. I'm sure we're okay for another week. <sighs> So two things today, and um, you know how much I like to talk before I actually get into these videos. Three things today. One um, is, so you know Marcus who reads the stories, you all know he puts these documents together for me so I can read them all out and it's the first time I'm reading them, the first time I'm seeing the pictures, so it's a genuine like um, reaction and a genuine first time reading them. He told me that this picture in this, there's a picture in a story coming up later, and he said it's one of the scariest ones he's seen. Um, and you know, we've had Letitia, we've had that girl who was in that hole that one time. So that's saying something. So I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> but what I'll do, when I have really scary pictures, I usually do like three, two, one, and then I tell you it's on the screen. Then I'll tell you when it's off the screen. So if you don't want to see the picture, I will let you know and I'll do like an audio description of a picture for you. Um, second second thing is, I'm trying some new makeup today in general, but I don't know if you all saw this one time, this one time, on Halloween I posted a video and it was me doing prosthetic makeup for the first time with Misha who has her own um, YouTube channel, I forgot what that was then, her own YouTube channel where she does incredible makeup, beauty and prosthetic. And you know, we, we talk quite a bit. We had a really fun time filming and it felt like I'd known her forever. And she casually just drops in the other day that she has her own makeup line. I was like, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> so she sent me some of her palettes and they look absolutely incredible. Um, it's definitely my thing, these illustrations on the front here. We have a witchcraft palette, which has these amazing like green tones with some more warmer um, tones in there. Oh, oh, it smells so good. We have the fawn palette, which are these nice like neutral brownie tones. And then we also have the queen bee palette, which looks just like this. What's, gr so <laughs> this is a thing. I know a lot of people like have their own brands, whatever, but this is why I was so like, why didn't you tell me? She invented the formula for these palettes. So it's the only brand that own this formula, made, handmade in the UK. So they're all cruelty free. And in, in particular, in the Fawn palette, some of these shades are kind of uniquely made more like a clay. So they're really great for like sensitive eye areas as well. And these were gifted to me. This isn't sponsored. I just really want to show these off because I think it's incredible for someone to invent their own formula. And um, it's very rare nowadays. So I really want to use these. And of course, I'll link them all below so you can check them out yourself. So they were gifted but not sponsored. Okay, so if you haven't joined me here on a Monday before, um, this is where I basically read out my subscribers' ghost stories that they send in to me, and I do a makeup kind of based on a way to die, but like in a comical way, if that's possible. So if you have any ghost stories, paranormal stories, weird happenings, <laughs> send them right here to this email address. Thank you, I appreciate it. You can do it in video form, uh, voice form, normal, normal email, however you feel comfortable doing so. Yeah, I don't, something's off with my lighting today. I've, I've, here's, okay, I, don't, I won't go into it. Anyway, <laughs> I've been talking for too long, but I do just have to say, as always, this series is very much based on Bailey Sarian's Murder Mystery and Makeup Mondays. I'll leave a link below to her channel, although I'm very sure you already know who she is. And talking of Bailey Sarian, for those of you who didn't see my video the other week, I mean, I'm pre-filming a lot, so I don't know what date it is. She very kindly sent me her ring that she is brought out in collaboration with Eater Love, who is this incredible jewelry brand. And it's just the most incredible. It's got that all-seeing eye, like that Illuminati eye, and that Ouija board planchette right there in the middle. Also, she sent over, maybe I'll take it off and show you. She also sent this incredible pendant as well, with, again, that all-seeing eye. Look at these two little moons as well in the bottom corners here. Again, it's that Ouija board planchette shape. Um, Really, really nice. It's very, it's nice and heavy, which to me means luxury. 
It's just really, really, really stunning. So thank you so much to Bailey Saren and Eater Love for sending me that. I, I just really appreciate it. And I was saying as well in my other video, it just falls perfectly into my um, rest of my jewelry collection. And it's so me, and I know it's like, so you guys too. I know who you are watching this. All right, so how did we die today? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I really need to start thinking about these things. So I'm really attracted to this um, witchcraft palette and I'm seeing all these greens. Um, so let's do, what's green? How do you die from green? Okay, so I was on like a health kick. <laughs> I was like, new year, new me, it's 2021. Last year was kind of crappy. This is m now time for me to have my year. And I was like, right, from now on, I'm only eating vegetables. Listen, I ate so many vegetables that it killed me. I don't know, but that's what happened. Oh, I have this oil in my beard. It's making me feel sick. It's like, it makes me feel travel sick. So that's how I died. Too much vegetables. I have my eye primer on. I have my brows ready to go. I have a primer from Max Factor on today. The Miracle Prep. It's actually really smoothed out my skin. My skin looks great. Not so much on this camera <laughs> under all these lights, but in real life. Let's just dive straight into our first story. And our first story today is called Battle in the Clouds. Hi Robert. So I thought I'd tell you all about a weird experience me and my cousin had when we were little. We were about six years old and we were walking down our street back from a shop at the end of our road. This was the late 70s and early 80s. So not strange to do that so young back then. Up in the sky, we both saw the strangest thing. We didn't really know how to describe it being so young, but now we know it was a medieval jousting battle. It says in brackets, lol, imagine. Literally, what men on horses jousting and people watching. They had full suits of armor, the lot. It wasn't in full color, more like gray outlines, sort of foggy, misty people. You could almost see the clouds through them. For we're moving like full on reenactment. We stood and watched this for what felt like ages and then ran to my cousin's house and told my auntie all about it. She remembers us telling her to this day. Fast forward about eight years and I was with some friends. We've moved house by this time. One of my friends had a book about ghosts. As I'm flipping through this book, there's a depiction of exactly what we saw. The picture was of three men standing on a grass hill, looking up at the sky, watching a medieval jousting battle. As you can imagine, I freaked out full on goosebumps. It's like they had reached into my mind and took the scene right out of my head and started reading the story. It said that these men had witnessed this battle playing out in the sky. And when they researched the area that apparently hundreds of years ago to that day, in that exact same spot they were standing, an actual jousting tournament had taken place. I did wonder if the same thing applied to where we were standing. I've done a bit of research myself since, and the town of Northampton in the UK is definitely the place where these tournaments took place, back in the 1300s. I know this isn't a typical ghost story, but there's no way we could have imagined the same thing. I wanted to share and say I love your channel, your amazing talent and personality. You have me laughing out loud all the time. You're a breath of fresh air, so thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. That, that means a lot. What? What? <laughs> Do you know what? It's so hard to depict like this jousting battle going on and to see that happening in the clouds. Very Lion King. Okay, so I didn't do too much. I was kind of like engrossed in that story. So we have our first audio story and this one is called no, this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. Lady in a picture. Okay, just to preface, sorry, this is future me. Just to preface this um, audio, there's a bit of crackle in the background, um, but do stick with it, because it's, it's, yeah, it's something else, okay. Hi, Robert, my name is Jessica. I'm from the US. I live in Oklahoma, and I have a story for you. To preface this story around the time I was 10, my sister had her first kid, my nephew, Jaden. One day we were having a party for him, maybe a year or two later. We were all just standing around. Back in those days, um, we had these disposable cameras. And so my sister was winding her camera and she was taking all these pictures of her son and everybody having fun. 
and she accidentally once she wound wound up the camera she accidentally took took a picture of the corner of my mom's room now at the time she had this big giant chest that her grandmother had actually given to her i believe we still have it it's like outside on the porch but it's covered and it's protected she accidentally took a picture of the chest okay whatever no big deal years later and I want to say at this point, I was maybe around 16, so maybe four years later. Um, we live in a new house. And it's right next door to the house that we used to live in previously. Um, but my mom had really waited for this house for a very long time. And at this time, it was just me um, and my twin brother and my mom. So we're all just hanging out and um, my sister is talking to my mom in her room and they're in front of my mom's old desktop and I'm in the living room watching TV and my sister calls me in the room and I'm like okay what's up what do you need and she's like Jessica look at this picture and I was like nice picture what of it and she's like like really look at the picture and i'm like i'm really looking at the picture what what's wrong with it and she's like don't you see that lady in the corner of the picture and i'm like yeah so what what's wrong with the lady in the corner of the picture and she's like no jessica she's not supposed to be there when i tell you i burst into tears I freak out. I can no longer look at the picture. And it took me years before I could ever look at it again. But it was so weird to look at a picture of a space that I grew up most of my life in. And to see just some lady sitting in the corner of the room. And it was so weird because it wasn't like she was standing up. And it wasn't even like she was laying down. It was literally just her face. It was just a face on top of this chest. There was nothing else there. It is the weirdest thing. But I cannot wait to see the look on your face when you see this picture that I attach. Because it is wild. Thank you for your content. Thank you for all your ghost stories and all your makeup tips. And just thank you for being the creator that you are. All right. Love you, Robert. Bye. Thank you so much. I'm kind of nervous to look at this picture. I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, so let's take a look at this picture. Oh my God, I really don't want to. I really, really don't. I'm really, I'm not usually this scared because it's only because Mark has said this is terrifying and then he sent the picture to James, my twin brother, and was like, look at it, and they were both like, oh my god, that's that's horrifying. But they didn't show me and I didn't want to look because it, it will ruin it. So Okay, so I'm gonna put the picture up on the screen. I'm gonna count down from three for those of you for those of you who don't want to see the picture, and then I will tell you when it's off the screen. So I'm gonna put the picture up in three, two, one. One. <gasps> oh, no, 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 no. Okay, and I'm taking it down in three, two, one. Oh, I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all. <sighs> oh my God, that face is so clear as well. First of all, thank you so much for your story. Second of all, thank you so much for that picture. It is haunting and that's a good thing for me. <laughs> that was incredible. I wonder, I, does it look like anyone? you you know or did know or anything i i don't know i'm trying to come up with like a reason why some why there'll be a, a face of someone just hanging around like that that's terrifying well thank you so much for sending it in that's that's great um and i suggest if you want to see the picture for longer than i had it on the screen because i can't deal with that then then absolutely <laughs> pause the screen and um yeah
I keep thinking to myself, go back and look at it, but I absolutely can't. I absolutely cannot look at that picture again. <laughs> okay, so our next story is called Ghost of a Great Torrent Tragedy. It says, hi Robert, this is a story my dad kept telling me and my siblings over and over again. It happened in an old abandoned bridge in Saudi Arabia. Going down from Abba City, the city is basically on top of a huge mountain. In 1982, in 1982 on a Saturday, there was a huge storm that caused torrents that would destroy the bridge and demolish many houses. And it killed and injured hundreds of people. It was called the Great Saturday Torrent. The remains of that bridge are still there, completely untouched. My dad, for some reason, wanted to go and visit the remains. My dad, for some reason, wanted to go and visit the remains of a bridge with his cousin and just hang out there. So they were sitting at the very edge of the bridge, or what remained of it. And after about 10 minutes, they started hearing singing coming from down the valley. But that place is abandoned. No human being is down there, just remains of that tragedy. So that was very creepy. After a few minutes of them ignoring it, small pieces of stone and gravel were thrown at them coming from the valley. At this point, they knew they were not welcome and finally left. But my dad said they didn't stop there. They bought a friend that they knew is scared of ghosts. He lost his shit <laughs> when the stones and gravel were being thrown at them again. I'm sure that guy is traumatized to this day. Yeah, I bet he is. <laughs> Poor boy. I think it is. I don't know. I feel like places where people have lost their lives, like tragedies, in some circumstances is a little bit um, disrespectful to hang out. You know, like goth teenagers at a graveyard. Thank you for your story. Okay, so it's that time of Monday <laughs> where, as custom, Marcus reads us two stories. Marcus, take it away. This first story is called Granny's House. I have a friend who's always been very sensitive to the paranormal. In the very northern part of my town, there was an abandoned farm property that we call Granny's House because of a local legend that the previous owner had died and was haunting it. My friend and I decided to go there one night, just driving the car around the property. We had stopped the car near the exit so I could roll down the window and get a better look at the main house. Immediately after doing that, my friend said, Roll up your window, it's coming to your side of the car. Thinking she was just trying to scare me, I decided to put the car into reverse so I could drive back into the property. The car had a rear window camera and an alert system that let you know if you were in danger of hitting someone or something. As soon as we put it into reverse, the alarm started blaring as if we had a collision, but the car wasn't moving and nothing was showing in the camera. We were the only ones there. I looked at my friend and she said, it's not granny, whatever it is wants to hurt us. So we left immediately. Shortly after the incident, I started experiencing terrifying things such as looking into my rear view mirror and seeing a woman sitting in the back seat behind me slowly leaning towards me. I panicked and looked away, and when I looked back in the mirror, the woman was gone. I also heard footsteps in my house, specifically in my bedroom, right beside me, as I would sit at my desk. I went back to Granny's house once after that, but when I saw a woman walk by the second floor window, I decided to stop testing fate and never go back. Since then, I've experienced no more weird or paranormal occurrences. Thank you for your lovely makeup videos. Keep up the amazing work. This second story is called Skinwalkers. Hi Robert, hope you're doing well. This happened when I was about 10 years old. My family and I lived on the Indian Reservation in Farmington, New Mexico. This place is up in the mountains and not much is around. We are Native Americans and we are all told as kids about skinwalkers. We never experienced them before this night and this made us all believers for sure. My aunt came to babysit while my mum went out with her friends. My aunt was a bit into witchcraft at the time and she wanted to play a game with cards and supposedly you can talk to the devil and ask questions, so of course we played. We asked stupid questions about random things. At one point we asked what time will my mum come home and it said 6am. Our plan was to see if this was right. We stopped playing, watched the movie, sat around by the fire in the living room where we planned to sleep for the night. It was around 3am and we all heard a tapping on the window. My brother gets up, looks out and sees nothing. 30 seconds later we hear a scratching on the window, kind of like the sound of a knife being dragged along the glass. 
So we start freaking out, of course, and then the scariest thing happened all of a sudden. There's a knocking on the windows in the house and a banging on the walls. It seemed like it went on forever, but it was probably only for five minutes. Then it got silent and I cried. I was so scared. Then we heard something in the back bedroom. This was my older brother's room. He grabbed a kitchen knife and decided to check. My older brother went with him. They turned on the light and nothing was there, but my brother opened the closet door. There was a box of folded blankets that they kept in the closet and it looked like something was sitting there as it had sunk in. It just started rising back up like whatever was sitting there just started standing. We ran out back into the living room. Things stopped after that but we were too afraid to go to bed so we stayed up all night until our mum got home at 6am on the dot. Well, there we go. Robert, have a lovely Christmas. Me and the uh, rest of the family have decided to all have it at mine. So I hope whatever you end up doing, you have a really nice time. Christmas is cancelled this year anyway, so it doesn't matter. Well, thank you for those stories. Um, First of all, oh my fucking God. Has anyone ever felt like at danger in their car? Not from like being on the road, but from like ghosts or like, um, you know, that... um, back seat story where's that where there's that like someone climbs into your back seat you know do you ever get that uh she'd be like shit I, I need to look behind me for some reason um and also skinwalkers listen i think that has to be one of the scariest creatures one of the scariest creatures i think i've ever kind of learned about and when i hear your stories about them it just makes me even more terrified <laughs> thank you for those they were terrifying just how we like them <laughs> okay i'll do my lashes last okay so this is called the farmhouse Hi Robert, I really love your channel, especially your ghost stories make up Mondays. My favourite way to unwind after a long shift at work. Thank you. Oh my eyes. I have a terrifying haunting story that was experienced by a close friend named Ryan that I've known for 15 years. He is really down to earth and not prone to telling wild tales. I'm sure I've forgotten half the details of this story. My friend and I grew up in a rural area of Pennsylvania. My friend and I grew up in a rural farm area of Pennsylvania. Think old woods, cornfields, and 200 year old farmhouses that are miles from the next. I love that. My friend was a young guy, fresh out of high school at the time. Some family friends asked him to watch their home and their pets while they went on vacation for a week. It was one of those old farmhouses surrounded by cornfields and miles from anything. But he thought it sounded like an easy job and said yes. The first night alone in the farmhouse, he felt extremely creeped out. He was all alone in the middle of nowhere and the old house kept making odd noises as old houses do. But he also heard what sounded like small footsteps upstairs, which he brushed off as maybe raccoons in the attic. He also mentioned that the family had four cats and that that evening they all suddenly (laughs) gathered in the old dining room and stared into a particular corner, puffed up as if they were afraid. He wanted to settle in and brush off the creepiness so he decided to watch TV. After he watched a few shows, he wanted to see what else was on. But when he went to pick up a remote to change the channel, he felt something grab his wrist. And for a few seconds, this phantom grip pulled at his arm. It quickly disappeared, appropriately freaked out, but trying to convince himself he imagined it, he decided to head to bed in the guest room they had set up for him upstairs. After he climbed under the covers, he heard the small footsteps again, this time approaching his room, no, from the long hallway outside his door. He then heard a light tapping on his door and what sounded like a little girl's voice say, Ryan, my friend, was petrified and sat frozen in his bed, barely breathing. After a time, the footsteps walked away. Naturally, my friend did not get any sleep that night. He stayed awake, staring at the door as the footsteps repeatedly approached his door throughout the night and the little girl's voice quietly called his name. This happened again and again, almost playfully. He was too afraid to leave his room until the sun rose. You would think at this point he would have had enough, but Ryan decided he needed to test whether or not he was imagining things. He invited another male friend to stay the night at the farmhouse with him, but didn't actually tell him he thought the farmhouse was haunted and he wanted to see if his friend would agree. That's that's nasty. (laughs) Ryan also bought a baseball bat 
back to the house with him when he returned to stay the next evening. I don't know what he thought it would do to a ghost, but it apparently made him feel safer. The night the two young men both settled into the guest room, which had two twin beds. It was not long before Ryan heard the footsteps. He looked over to his friend to see if he heard them, and found his friend staring pale-faced at the closed door. Then, the quiet voice calling his name again, Ryan. They were both too scared to move and could barely breathe. His friend looked at him with absolute terror. He heard her too. Again, her footsteps retreated. Things seemed to quiet down after that, so both guys pulled blankets over themselves and tried to sleep. A while later, Ryan hears his friend mutter, stop, stop touching me. To which Ryan replies, mm, what are you talking about? His friend says, are you messing with me? You keep touching me. Ryan points out to his friend that he has been several feet away this entire time. They both freak out and the friend jumps into Ryan's bed where they both sat back to back, Ryan holding his baseball bat lights on for the entire night. Morning comes and they both run out the house, get into their cars, and leave as fast as they can. At this point, Ryan is done staying the night at the farmhouse. He still visits during the day to take care of the pets, but leaves in the evening well before dark. I don't blame him. When the owners return, Ryan asks them if they've ever experienced... Stop, stop, I just pre-read. <sighs> when the owners return, Ryan asks them if they've ever experienced anything strange at their house. The husband gives him a strange look and asks, what do you mean exactly? Ryan tells the owners that he heard footsteps and what sounded like a little girl calling his name. The owner's response to this was a shocked, it knows your name. Naturally, <laughs> Ryan freaked out. What knows my name? And the owner replied that he hoped Ryan would not experience anything during his stay but that they believe the ghost of a little girl is haunting the farmhouse. They hadn't told him because they didn't want to seem crazy. And they didn't want him to refuse the job either. That's unfair. Ryan is not upset that they didn't tell him, but he informs them that he will, <laughs> that he will not ever agree to watch the house again. Especially since even the owner seemed shocked by the fact that whatever was haunting the farmhouse knew Ryan's name. You know what, to me, that's, that's just as bad as someone being like, oh, some random guy turns up at the house every night and bangs on all the doors, um, but we're not telling you because we want you to look after our house. <laughs> Actually, I think I'd rather some random guy turned up and bang on all the doors than some little girl standing outside the bedroom saying my name. Well, this is it. This is me dying from eating my vegetables. So if there's any kids watching this, eat your vegetables, but also don't. Um, eyeshadows are absolutely beautiful. They're, they're so, so stunning, amazing, so easy to blend, so nice to work with. Uh, so thank you for sending me those. Well, thank you so much for joining me and thank you for all those incredible stories today. Like I said, you can go ahead and send yours right here to this email address. Paranormal experiences, weird experiences. Thank you again. I will see you very soon and have an amazing Christmas if you're celebrating Christmas. If you're just having some time with your family, have an amazing rested week. Oh, if you can, I keep forgetting there's this whole thing, isn't there? Well, thank you so much again. I'll see you very soon. Bye.